to talk today is about the surgical techniques of the aortic valve replacement and aortic root enlargement. Uh, so this is my outline. Why is not? This is my outline. So the first of all, I need to talk about the overview of the anatomical feature of the aortic valve. Actually, the aortic valve uh, related to the pulmonary, pulmonary root anteriorly and uh, aortoventricular uh, valves posteriorly. In the left, the mitral valve, and the, on the right, the tricuspid valve. And connected with the mitral valve by the aortomitral curtain. And, the, and if you see here, the, the right trigon and the left trigon uh, towards the anterior lateral commissure of the mitral valve. So the aortic root anatomy is composed from sinotopial junction and sinuses of alpha and annulus, aortic valve leaflet, and leaflet attachment, and the leaflet intertrigons. So there is three junctional uh, junctions in the aortic root, the physiological junction, anatomical ventricular aortic junction, and the virtual basal ring. So uh, as we know, the, the annulus, the aortic annulus, a little bit smaller than the sinotopical junction. So the sinotopical junction is larger uh, around 1.3 uh, than the, the aortic, aortic annulus. So the very important uh, picture is the, uh, the, uh, the structure related to the aortic valve. And we have to know that during the, our, our procedure uh, in the aortic valve, the ventricular septum in between the left and right um, and, the, and the membranous septum between the, between the right coronary cusp and the non-coronary cusp. And beneath of that is the, the left bundle branch. And the, the area between the left and non-coronary cusp is, is aortomitral uh, curtain. And if you do the mitral surgery and you talk the deep stitch, you may end up with the AI. Why? Because you may, in the, you may talk the, the non-coronary cusp with you during the procedure. So be careful about the, the structure related to the aortic valve. So uh, last week, we talked about the low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis. I have a couple of slides about that. It's a very interesting uh, article. The low gradient aortic stenosis for my colleagues, residents, uh, low flow, that means the stroke volume less than 35 ml per meter, and low gradient, that means the gradient less than 40, and aortic stenosis, that means the area less than one. So the, our approach or approach for the low gradient, uh, low flow, first of all, you need to know the ejection fraction. Is it preserved or no? If the ejection fraction is not a preserved, less than 50, that means it's classical flow, low flow, low gradient. And by the way, this is the worst uh, type, the worst type of the, of the low flow, low gradient, around, around five to 10 percent from the, uh, from the low flow, low, low gradient types. If the ejection fraction is preserved, the, uh, the, the second is simply no to the flow. If the flow is less than 35 ml per meter, that means that that's called the paradoxical low flow, low gradient. If the, if the, if the uh, flow is more than 35, this is the normal flow, low gradient. So in case of the classical low flow, low gradient, that means the ejection fraction is less than 50, so first step is to do the dobutamine stress echo. And if the gradient is increased more than 40, that means it's a true, true uh, superior to stenosis. And, that, and after that, you, you, uh, you assess uh, according to the risk stratification, as Ahmed mentioned last week. Uh, if the gradient less than 40 and, and still the aortic valve area and, and, and the aortic valve area is increased to more than one, that means the pseudos of your false uh, aortic stenosis. So you need to treat the heart failure symptoms and the closed monitoring. If the gradient is still less than 40 and aortic valve area less than one, so there is maybe the dobutamine stress echoes and insert uncertain or uh, we cannot rely on that so you need to do the projected aortic valve area and the, the echo people knows that 
if the uh, if the flow is increased more than 15 percent uh, should be and and we we have to rely if the flow is increased more than 15 percent if the still less than 15 percent we have to do the calcium scoring if the calcium scoring more than 2000 that means is a true superior to stenosis of the of the uh, uh, the calcium scoring less than 2000 uh, that means it's pseudo sufit so the uh, follow the, uh, the 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 approach as we mentioned before so in case of paradoxical low flow low gradient and uh, an ejection fraction uh, preserved so first is the step one is to rule out any error by the echo if you rule out any uh, if you rule out the, the the measurement error the second step you need to know the the cause of the low flow is it the restrictive physiology or AFib or mitral stenosis or regurg or RV dysfunction? By the way, restrictive physiology is uh, contraindicated to do the, the vitamin stress. And then after that, assist symptomatic, symptomatic status of the patient by the exercising him. If the patient symptomatic, step Three, you have to treat the hypertension because you know the hypertension is increasing the afterload. The afterload will decrease the low flow. So after normalization, after normalization of the blood pressure, and still the 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 flow is less than 35, and the gradient more than less than 40. So you you have to confirm about the severity of aortic stenosis by the by the uh, low dose the vitamin stress echo if doable. But uh, as we mentioned before, maybe in some cases contraindicated. So you will, you will do the calcium scoring. If the more than 2,000, that's true. If less than 2,000, pseudosafir, so treat medically. Or in case of true, go to the, the, uh, the guy uh, as based on, on guidelines. Is it low or intermediate or high risk? And this is just comment about the low flow, low gradient. So we'll talk about the, the replacement, isolated aortic valve replacement. Initial step, you, uh, after your preparation and median stenotomy and the initiation of cardiopulmonary bypass, so your incision, actually there is three types of incision, either the transverse or oblique or extended incision. Transverse is the most common approach. And the advantage is good exposure for aortic root and LVOT and the uh, don't disturb the sinotubular junction. In case of the oblique incision, you, uh, you send the obliquely into the non-coronary non uh, sinus. And this is usually used when, uh, when, uh, when you want to do the, the enlargement procedure, of, uh, I mean the procedure, uh, uh, the aortic root enlargement procedure uh, approach. And this is, again is a good exposure for the aortic root and aortic and, uh, and LVOT. In case of extended incision, and this, uh, like this picture, so the, you transected the aortic valve, uh, transected the, uh, the aortic above the, the sinotubular junction, in and for example, in case of the ROS procedure or, or the uh, stentless bioprocesses impl implantation, uh, again, this is for, good for the LVOT and aortic root exposure. After your, uh, after your um, incision, you have to extend the valve. So the start, start from the commissure between the left and right, between the non and right, and towards the other commissure between the left and, uh, and right. And then counterclockwise, counter remove the, the other, other uh, remove other leaflet, and then end with the, with the non-coronary, non-coronary, uh, non-coronary cusp. And if you look this, uh, the, 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 the picture, you see that some calcium here. So the, the third step now is to cleaning the area, decalcification of the of the uh, of the aortic uh, of the aortic annulus of the aortic valve by the vascular forceps and and twisting motion. Why? Because to preserve the connective tissue of the valve and to prevent the perforation of the um, of the aortic wall. And some surgeon put the small uh, small goes here to to catch. Uh, the calcium depress. After the cleaning area, now you you uh, you uh, you will put the uh, the traction set to expose the valve, and you will see the 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 area in front of you like this. This is the anterior leaf to mitral valve and the right and left coronary coronary ossea. 
And now the, the implantation of prosthetic aortic valve, this is the most common operation for replacing aortic valve. There is no advantage to oversize the prosthesis because maybe it will lead to the erosion of the aortic annulus. So there is two techniques for that, interrupted or continuous suture technique. The most common and standard one is interrupted suture technique. It's the maximum strength of the prosthetic attachment and the lowest incidence of the paravagular leak. So as you see in the, in the, in the, in the picture, it starts from the double, knee, double needle suture, a different color, usually white and green with the, with the budget. It starts from commission between the left and right and then pass through the, the, the swing ring. And usually put the budget in the in the aortic wall in case of the in case of small annular I will uh, I will mention later in case of the small annular we put it in the ventricular side as a supraannular technique and then after you complete that area complete the counterclockwise uh, uh, the the left one and then the non coronary non coronary non coronary uh, sinus. And passing through the, the, uh, the valve. After that, tightening the, tightening the, the suture, as um, is a surgeon prefer or preferences, uh, some, uh, some surgeons start from the, from the commission between the left and right, and then towards the, uh, the, uh, the non and, uh, and right, and, and again to, to the other side, and end with the non coronary. But I, what I found the literature and the, in the surgical technique box. They started from the non-coronary, non started from the non-coronary, and then uh, tied the, uh, the commission between the left and right to seal the valve, and then start from the uh, from the, the left, and then end with the right. So, in case of small annular, uh, small annulus, uh, you put the project from the ventricular side to implant the valve as supraannular, supraannular uh, technique. Uh, we'll move on to the allograft aortic valve, uh, and this is called the Ross intact non coronary sinus technique. The allograft uh, is a homograft, yeah, I mean, replacing the aortic valve with the other human, a human aortic valve. So, usually, the homograft came with the, with the non coronary sinus, with the intact non coronary sinus. That's why they, they call the intact non coronary sinus technique. Technique or some some box the uh, and some articles called subcoronary or freehand technique. So is useful in case of the uh, AI due to the leaflet prolapse or deformity and enlargement of the non-coronary. So you need the non-coronary sinus uh, uh, from the homograph. So the regarding the diameter of the homograph should be smaller than the aortic annulus because the thickness of its wall. It will occupy some space. That's why you have to select the uh, one or two millimeter smaller than the aortic annulus. This is the homograft. Now, the trend the homograft, you you will remove the aortic uh, the the uh, the coronary ossea from the homograft, and you will really you will uh, maintain or, or relieve the non coronary sinus intact to maintain the relationship of the commissure on each side of the, of the sinus. And after that, inverted the homograft inside the LVOT and start, the, the start your, um, start your, uh, your, uh, your suturing, your the valve suturing by the continuous or running suture of the valve and after, after you uh, finish from the annulus, I mean, attach the annulus of the, the homograph to the, uh, attach of the homograph to the annulus, and then uh, pull it up, uh, pull it up the, the homograph, pull it up, and you will, uh, you will see the non-coronary non sinus of the homograph, and this is non-coronary sinus of the patient, and this is non-coronary sinus of the homograph. And then they start with the lowest point of the uh, of the um, of the homograft, the aortic homograft, with the uh, with the aortic sinus of the patient. And then by two stitches, start from here, 
from here up to the uh, up to the commissioner, and the other search from here up to that uh, up to that commissioner, and the other way and the other side again to suture here and here, and then you will end with the two search here or two suture here, and the complete the non coronary sinus with the running suture. So we will we will end with the two suture here and two suture here and two two here and tight it down. And this is uh, this is our uh, workshop. Uh, would like to thank Dr. Shabir Shah, our program director, to his effort to conduct such workshops. And uh, this is our colleagues, the resident cardiac surgery residents. Uh, okay, now we'll uh, we'll we'll talk about the aortic root enlargement procedure. Actually, the the, the procedure approach is the most common procedure. Um, it will give you around uh, up to four millimeter enlargement, up to two, uh, up to one size or two size, and there is three procedure: next procedure, manogion procedure, and the nuns procedure. I will talk about uh, everyone. And the anterior approach uh, is a conal procedure, aortic-ventricular aplasty, a little bit complex procedure due to the due to the high uh, risk and high risk of complications. And the uh, and the com the complexity of the procedure itself. Now we'll talk about the nuns uh, nuns operation or procedure enlargement of the LVOT. And the nuns operation is described four years after the menogian. And the difference between the nuns and, and menogian is the, uh, the incision. The nuns the nuns procedure, the incision of the uh, of the uh, of the aortic root is not extend into the mitral and the anterior leaflet of mitral, but in the case of menogian, extend up to the middle of the anterior leaflet of mitral valve. So you start your your uh, expose the valve after exposure and after attraction and everything. You incise the uh, the I don't know exactly uh, the the uh, it's incise the annulus of the aortic valve or no. But in the picture you can see here, it's already inside the annulus and a little bit of the, of the, of the one third of the anterior mitral valve leaflet. And then fashioned your patch to, the, to, the, uh, to the, your incision. Start with the blood jet, suture, and pass through the swing ring of the valve. Uh, and then uh, finish your uh, valve suturing. Uh, the blood jet to support the to the support the uh, the patch and support the annulus of the aortic valve, and after that close the aortotomy by the running screw. Uh, and the, in case of Menogian uh, procedure, you can see the incision up to middle third of the anterior leaflet of mitral valve, and then again in the same uh, fashion your patch and continue with, uh, suturing the patch to the defect with the running suture. And and you if you reach the if you reach the uh, the, uh, the aortic annulus, put it the, some blood jet to support the annulus. And after that, uh, close uh, aortotomy with the running with the running suture. And actually, the menogian it gives you around two size or one one to two size enlargement. In case of next procedure, uh, the incision in the middle of the non coronary. In the middle of the non corner. The issue with that is the anterior leaflet of mitral valve is off center and enlarge around one size, uh, one size enlargement of the LVOT. Yeah, in case of the anterior, uh, anterior. <coughs> Aziz, yes. could you allow me to comment one thing? Sure, sure. Uh, just because you were mentioning about the aortic root enlargement. And you were asking, is it uh, needed to cut through the annulus or not? Yes, any enlargement, you need to cut the annulus. If, yeah. if it is known as, or it is a monogium, because yeah. without cutting the annulus, you will not have, you yeah. will have what they call it aortoplasty, exactly. not aortic root enlargement. So yeah. just to, to keep this uh, in mind. Yeah, exactly, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Hartem. Now, uh, we'll talk uh, now we'll talk about the cono, the cono aortoventricular plasty. The cono is a complex, as we mentioned before, a complex procedure and uh, high risk of the complications. 
So the, the first of all, the vertical incision, the anterior to the, uh, in between, between, between the right coronary and the commissure between the left and right, and extend to the RBOT. And then after that, I'll incise the septum. Uh, after your in, uh, incision, uh, you bring the, your, 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 uh, your patch and uh, close the, uh, the, the, the septum with the running future. And if you reach the aortic annulus, you will bring the other patch and support it with the blood jet suture and passing through the two patch through the aortic uh, swing ring. And then after that, complete your, uh, your valve suturing and you will end with, the, with this picture to, to the leaflet and then close the, uh, the, uh, the RVOT and then end with the close of, uh, closing of the aortotomy. So as we mentioned, there's a uh, high risk of complication, high uh, risk of the, uh, in terms of the hemorrhage, in terms of the conduction problem, in terms of the, of the patch dehiscence, in terms of the, of the RV uh, performance. So this is not widely used in the, uh, the worldwide. So there is a meta-analysis about the, the comparing the aortic root enlargement with the, uh, with AVR versus AV isolated AVR, around 10 studies, uh, around 10 studies, uh, total population around 13,000 patients, the 2,000, uh, around 3,000 patients with the uh, enlargement group and 10,000 patients uh, with the isolated AVR. It's not concomitant with other procedure. And the uh, study, uh, studies was from 2002 up to 2018, and it was published in, 2000, in 2019 in January. So they found there is no significant difference in case of, in terms of MI, you can see there is no differences between the enlargement and aortic valve uh, related AVR. And again, there is no difference between, between, uh, between them. And the, in case of the, of the BBM implantation and the base maker implantation and complete heart block, again, there is no differences and the P value around, around uh, 0.5. Again, in re-operation re for bleeding, uh, no significant differences. I will, I will come to, I will cross, uh, I will discuss about the other, other studies. They found uh, the re-operation in case of the, in case of the concomitant procedure. I mean, the, I mean, procedure AVR with the cabbage, with the mitral valve, the risk of reoperation is high and significantly high. And uh, in cardiovascular bypass time and cross clamp time is in favor in the enlargement group. And despite on that, there is no risk of MI, no risk of the uh, stroke. Even the cardiovascular bypass is, uh, time is is high with the enlargement group. Uh, and and, 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 and aortic uh, and aortic cross clamp again is uh, in favor of the uh, enlargement group. And post operative mismatch is significantly uh, differences in favor of the enlargement group. Okay. Now the, the overall, the, they found that uh, that is associated with the increase, the, uh, I mean the mortality, uh, mortality is a little significant with the, with the, uh, with enlargement group. So the, uh, the enlargement, enlargement with the AVR is associated with the, with the increased risk of perioperative mortality, but most significant differences in case of my property. The other uh, item, uh, can you mute your, uh, um, item? Done, done. Thank you. So the, in case of the, uh, the other studies is the cohort uh, retrospective studies. Uh, they, they found no significant differences in the early mortality. This is around eight, 800 patients by Dr. Tam. So there is no early mortality with the with the uh, enlargement group uh, combined with the with the cabbage patient, but there is increased risk of the of reopening uh, 
directly opening uh, due to the due to the uh, due to the bleeding. So if you if you see here, the there is the isolated isolated procedure and this concomitant with the cabbage. And around eight patients, around eight hundred patient, and the isolated five hundred patient concomitant procedure. The mortality rate, at the early mortality rate at thirty days mortality, there is no significant differences even in the concomitant procedure. But if you, if you see the, the, the reopening re or re-exploration is significantly differences with the, with the concomitant procedure with the cabbage. And significant p-value is 0.006. And if you see the eight years follow-up, they, they found no significant differences in case of the mortality rate. And uh, despite the significant uh, dropping number of the patients from 800 up to 993 and from 809 up to 82. And in case of the uh, congestive heart, uh, the uh, readmission due to heart failure, and this one weakness of, the, of this study is because they, they didn't include the, uh, the echocardiographic data in, in, uh, in, uh, in the study, and they found the uh, readmission due to the congestive heart failure in, uh, in, in eight years, no significant, again, no significant differences, and, and B value of 0.13. So the other, other studies is enlargement of the small aortic uh, root, a little bit old, 2008. They, they, uh, they found is that enlargement is safe procedure to, uh, to decrease the gradient, but it doesn't associate it with the, with the improvement in, in, uh, in terms of outcome, in terms of the long-term outcome. So now we'll talk about the aortic root replacement technique. There is two techniques actually, is complete root technique, free sanding technique, and there is other, te other technique, is cylinder technique. We'll talk about the free, hand free sanding technique. And uh, usually is uh, indication due to the cross deformity by the infection of congenital anomaly and uh, described by the Donald Ross. So uh, after, your expo after your incision and excise and, uh, and expose your, uh, the, the, uh, the valve, uh, you incise the coronary ossea, as you uh, see here. And then after that, you uh, start the simple suturing with uh, with the uh, with the VOT to the, the to the homograft to the allograft, and then uh, simple suture technique. And then uh, some surgeon put the Teflon felt slab uh, incorporated between two stitch between the, the suture to reinforce the aortic root and to uh, ensure the hemostasis and to prevent dilatation further uh, later on. And after that, uh, the anastomosis, the coronary ossea, start with the, the left one. After you finish it from the, the left one, uh, uh, start from the end-to-end -end anastomosis of the distal part started from the backward and then uh, anterior wall. And after that, fill the aortic, uh, aortic root, fill the aortic root to know the, the site of the, of, the, of the right coronary artery. And after, after uh, yeah, I didn't have the picture for the, the right one. After you're filling the, uh, the right, uh, after you're filling the, the aortic, uh, aorta, you, you find the, uh, the uh, correct location for the, the right, right coronary ossea. So now we'll talk about the centrist bioprocesses. And this is the uh, sub coronary technique. And um, as we mentioned before, the aorta is divided around one centimeter above the sinovertebral junction, tra uh, transfers aortotomy. And usually the downsizing is not required because the xenograft, xenograft from the, the, I mean from the animals, uh, are sized according to the outside diameter of the device. But in the homograft is sized according to inside orifice of the diameter. So in some surgeon, uh, uh, the, some surgeons select the one or two, two millimeter larger than the aortic annulus because the, you know, the scentless uh, uh, the uh, devices is is flexible and easy to to uh, to incorporate in the aortic root. 
So the advantage over scented valves is the patient aorta is, uh, is uh, support the valve, especially in case of small, uh, small valve, more flexibility, so it will take, it will, uh, it will say longer time, durability, and the uh, implantation, the same implantation. So uh, uh, as we mentioned before, the same implantation for the, the hobograft, you start with the size, this is the, the zonograft, you incise the coronary ossea. And you can see this, the dacron, dacron, uh, dacron uh, fibric to, to help for implantation and to prevent the shrinkage of the, of the, uh, of the graft. Now, after exposure of the after exposure of the aortic valve, put the mark 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 marks on the and the commissure, and then uh, start your suture in the interleaver trigon, uh, interleaver triangle, below uh, below the edge and commissure, and start the continuous suturing. Uh, continuous suturing start from the, the right the right coronary uh, sinus. And then the uh, heal, heal the, the, the valve a little bit away and put it the traction loop every third uh, every third uh, stitch to to help in the uh, intention and to help the and, and put it the, the, the suture under tension after later on if you if you uh, if you want to to tight it down. After you complete the uh, after you complete the annulus uh, anastomosis, now you uh, start with the non coronary. Now we'll uh, suturing the non coronary non coronary uh, sinus. After that, after that, you start with the with anastomosis of the uh, of the of the aorta of the the aorta of the zonograft to the aorta sinus, as we mentioned before, and continuous with the one suture, continuous running suture. Up to the up to the non coronary, and then close the, the aorta with the continuous suturing, and you will end with this picture. Uh, the other uh, this is the Ross procedure or pulmonary autograft. So you will uh, you will take the, the the patient pulmonary valve and put it in the aortic position, and and this usually in in in, in, uh, in younger patient. And again, it is described by Ross, uh, Donald Ross, the advantage of this procedure durability because the, the, uh, the put it etogenous tissue in high pressure aortic valve, it will take longer time. So the procedure, the key, uh, the key uh, principle here, or key, uh, key point here is the, to know the anatomical relation of the first septal branch. Of, uh, because the you know the, the damage of this is critical, criti the critical point of this procedure is damaging of the of the of this branch. So after your uh, incise, after your incise, the aorta starts with the uh, with the with the dissection between the aorta between the aorta and pulmonary, and then after that your uh, after your incision in the aorta and excise the the, the coronary the coronary ossea and put the traction to expose the, the aorta uh, and dissect the area between the pulmonary and between the aorta, try to, to, uh, to separate pulmonary artery as distal at the bifurcation and don't be short in the right, right pulmonary artery. And after that, after that, inspect the pulmonary, uh, pulmonary valve from inside and identify the anterior interleaved trigon as a reference point. So after that, insert the right, uh, the right angle clam and to that area and make the small opening and you incise the, the RVOT on that point. Then this is the critical point. This is the critical step in this procedure, the posterior wall of the, uh, of the RBOT. Your incision with the, with the knife, your incision with the knife should be shallow like this, and to avoid the injury of the septal branch, of the, uh, of the first septal branch. And then after your incision, uh, so attach the, the pulmonary autograph to the aorta, start with the, with the, start with the, with the ear, Below the, below the coronary, 
below the coronary. And then after you complete the, the continuous surgery, some, some surgeon put it the, the, the Teflon felt strip to, to, uh, to ensure hemostasis and to prevent, uh, to prevent uh, dilatation later on. Then, uh, uh, then anastomosis of the right of the left, the coronary ossea to the to the to the pulmonary autograft with the running suture, and then uh, start with the distal anastomosis. I don't I don't know because I have been seeing the couple of cases of us, but I didn't see this color. Uh, this color to be the same of the the diameter of the of the. Uh, so same diameter of the LVOT diameter. And then the uh, start with the distal anastomosis of the uh, of the pulmonary autograph to the syndic aorta and fill of the and fill of the aorta and fill of the uh, fill of the aorta to define to uh, to uh, to know the, the the site of the right coronary ossium. Then after that uh, and it's most of the pulmonary homograft. You will bring the pulmonary homograft and start to uh, start to attach the pulmonary homograft to the RVOT. Start from the anterior wall and then in the posterior wall. Posterior wall, the, you take the partial thickness of the posterior uh, of the posterior wall of the uh, of the RVOT to brief, to prevent or to avoid damage of the of the septal branch. And then you will end with this uh, picture. Any question? Question? No, no question. But I have I have comments later on multiple things. Yes, please. Regarding uh, <clears throat> before you mentioned the cono and the complication of the cono as anterior enlargement. Actually, it is good procedure, and they use a modified cono, as Dr. Zuhair, he used to do modified cono, not to go uh, too much in the enlargement uh, on the RVOT, to avoid the complication of the RVOT and the dysfunction of the RV. This yes. is regarding the cono. And uh, the mo very most important thing, the patient prosthesis mismatch, which is well defined by Rahmatullah uh, paper, and the most important thing is that the um, effective uh, L index, uh, effective orifice area, if it is less than 0.85, you start to have patient persistence with less than 0.6, is severe one. And yeah. you need to anticipate patient processes mismatch pre-op before going to the OR. So before going for enlargement, sometimes you just need to choose a different uh, kind of uh, prosthesis. For example, if you mandate to have tissue valve sutureless, for example, aortic valve had a better performance in terms of the gradient, and that will translate to this patient prosthesis mismatch, or you will go to low profile prosthesis, which is mechanical valve, to avoid mm -hmm. that. Or you plan pre op that you will do aortic root enlargement to avoid patient prosthesis mismatch. Famous paper was published by. Uh, Cleveland Clinic that there is no effect on mortality if you have patient processes mismatch, but you will have symptoms. They only mentioned about mortality, but you will, the patient will have frequent. Uh, they will have frequent uh, visiting for the for 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 the hospital for the heart failure and symptoms. But again, a rising the literature showing there is uh, an effects of uh, patient processes mismatch on uh, morbidity and mortality. But I just mentioned that Cleveland Clinic, I can send it later to in, in, in the group. Um, surgical technique, you have mentioned <clears throat> you can use bridgeted suture, uh, ventricular side, aortic side, bridgeted, non bridgeted. Now there is a current growing evidence regarding uh, not using bridgeted, and that will translate to a uh, bigger valve and less. Uh, patient processes mismatch, and also there is no increased risk uh, of, um, of uh, paravalvular leak without using bligetate. However, it's different for, I mean, this was, now there is a growing evidence about, about this as well. Just uh, to mention a couple of, uh, I mean, this, this point as well. Thank you.
Okay, thank you so much, Hayden. Uh, so, uh, summary for us is the NS most pulmonary autograft to the aortic annulus, connect the left coronary artery to the pulmonary autograft, and then NS most pulmonary homograft to the distal pulmonary artery, and a smooth of the pulmonary homograph, uh, pulmonary aut autograph to the ascending aorta, and temporarily descend the aorta to determine the proper location of the anastomosis of the RCA to the pulmonary autograft, anastomosis of the RCA to the pulmonary autograft, and connect the proximal end of the pulmonary allograft to the right to the RVOT. And thank you so much. Any question? Any comments? Thank you so much, uh, Abdelaziz. Good talk. I just want to give some comments about surgical techniques, okay? Yes. So the, uh, the, uh, when we use blooded it and we use it in the ventricular side versus uh, into the aortic side, this is called averting and non-averting technique. Yeah. The classical teaching, we use averting technique, which is the blooded it onto the aortic side. This is when you use a mechanical bioprocesses, okay? okay. Because you want the prosthesis to go inside the annulus, okay? The non uh, the, the non vertic technique when you put the blood into the ventricular side, okay? Mm -hmm. This is, we use it for bioprosthetic. And this is what we call supraannular um, implantation for the valve, okay? okay. Yeah. In terms of, uh, in terms of uh, blood non blood as, as you guys see, I, I don't use blood in any mitral or aortic cases. Because blood will do two things. First of all, it's, 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 it might increase risk of infection, and it's also increase bannous formation, and will increase the subvalvular gradient uh, below, below the valve. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, uh, root enlargement, uh, you mentioned about menugian uh, necks and uh, naso, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so. I'll give you the shortcut, okay? So when you say next, you okay. go to the non-coronary. Next, non-coronary, okay? Yes. The whole idea of next, you don't go to, down to the annulus. You just go to the, uh, uh, you, you go across the side of the junction because in some cases, in some patients, the root itself is not small, but it's just the side of the junction that you cannot pass the bioprocesses. This, uh -huh. is, this is really when we use next. Okay. When you say menugian, uh -huh. Manugian, you cut into Manugian M, that means mitral valve, okay? okay? So you go down to the commissure between the lung and the right, uh -huh. uh, uh, sorry, the commissure between uh, the, the left and the lung, yeah. and you cut all the way down to the mitral valve, to the half of the mitral valve, okay? okay. And then you bring the patch all the way up, okay? Okay. okay. Modified menugin, or what you call it, nanzo, you, you, you cut all the way down to the annulus. And you don't go really deep in the mitral valve. Maybe you, okay? Uh, I saw when you, you mentioned you put stitches first. I don't, I don't, I don't recommend you to, to put blood stitches into the batch, then into the valve. I don't recommend this, because uh -huh. this might increase risk of infection. What okay. I recommend you to do, you fix the batch first into the aortic wall. Uh -huh. And then you do a uh, regular aortic valve replacement, like put st stitches uh, into the annulus. Okay. When you reach into the batch, you put the blooded stitches, but you put it from outside in, just to make sure that you don't uh, uh, shrink the, 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 the batch and make the annulus small again, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. In terms of... Uh, 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 Kono, I'm not really expert with this. I, w I never done it. I saw it once, but I don't think it's 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 really necessary, you know, because uh -huh. you can you can get a very good result with Menugian and decrease risk of uh, of complication by VSD creation and uh, uh, right ventricular function. Okay. Yes. Uh, in terms of uh, ROS procedure, I have a question. Yes. What are the contraindications for ROS? Everybody uh, talks about ROS, 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 ROS. Yeah, rheumatic, mitral, rheumatic disease uh, in general. Rheumatic disease? Yeah. What else? Uh, pulmonary, is something pulmonary or... 
I'm not sure about the, the other. If the patient have a connective tissue disorder, it's contraindicated because also the, the pulmonic valve will dilate as well, like the pulmonic artery, by definition. Or yeah. if the patient have infective endocarditis that's involved the pulmonic valve, this is another uh, contraindication. Or if the patient have a pulmonary hypertension, okay? You have to be careful. Because you don't want to uh, stir a lot the, the, the RV, okay? okay. Yeah. So this is the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, I think Ross has a special indication. If the patient is, is young, she is female, she wants to avoid uh, anticoagulation and all this stuff. Yeah. It's just, it might be considered. However, in my opinion, you, you instead of having a univalvular problem, you give the patient bivalvular problems. Oh, okay. But it, it has its own, its own uh, benefit and its own uh, critique. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, sutureless valve, uh, so the homograft, when you take a homograft, you do it subcoronary. It's very uh -huh. simple. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, you just cut the valve. You shape the valve. You uh, are behind the coronaries and you suture it down there. I think there is too many things talking about how you put it down, but at the end, the most important thing is the orientation, because you have uh -huh. to orient the left behind the uh, left below the left, right below the right, and then you suture the way you like. The most important thing you have to be careful not to twist or uh, or uh, uh, alter the geometry for the valve because in subcoronary is easily that you can alter the the, 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 the valve geometry and end up with uh, aortic regurgitation. Uh -huh. The easiest technique is instead of do subcoronary is to do a root re replacement. Okay. You prepare the patient as you're doing pental and you put the, the, the homograft as the root replacement. Uh -huh. In terms of uh, zonograft, who you call freestyle, yeah, I don't really recommend to to replace subcoronary with, with with a freestyle because it's also there is a lot, there is a risk of uh, valve geometry. But I, what I recommend you to do is to do a full bental, which is replace the whole aortic root with the zonograft. The most important thing you need to know is the orientation for the coronaries. It's it's in the human, the right and the left, they have 120 degrees angle. But sometimes in the bigs, it comes as 90 degree angle. So you have to be careful. You usually orient your homograft, the left coronary to the left coronary. Mm -hmm. But the right is not necessarily that you need to do it at the right uh, ostium for, for the bigs uh, root. You might need to shift it a little bit so it will have a better alignment. Okay. This is one comment about this. Yes. Also comment about tying the valve. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned you tie the valve, you start from none. I don't recommend you to do this. Mm -hmm. Always, always, as you can see me, I always tie first stitch behind, below the, uh, the left main and below the right main. Okay. Because I want to make sure I don't include the coronaries. Mm -hmm. After that, I finish the left, finish the right, and ended up with none. Because if, if I need the valve to tilt, I need the valve to tilt into the non-coronary. So okay. it will not cause any obstruction for the coronary arteries. Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Thank you so much. Shabir is with us, right? Yes. yes. How are you, Mohammed, now? Alhamdulillah, Shabir, how are you, man? You doing okay? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Shabir, we have...